uh, here we are. Welcome to uh, an episode of Steve Trevino and the Captain Evil podcast. Yes. Um, I think it's funny that, like, I just started saying that. I, and, like, I know what you're going to say, what? actually. Um, I, that people don't even know my name. Well, no, I, no, I wasn't going to oh. say that. I was going to say how, like, <laughs> how you automatically turn on your, oh, the cameras are rolling oh, face. Oh, me? Yeah, like, yeah. like, you know, you went from, <laughs> from bitch face. Shut your mouth. To, okay, we're about to start rolling. And then, oh, hey, meet the, meet the real Renee. That is not the real <laughs> Renee. That is not, like, I can always tell when you're on a, like, a, a, business call or like oh you too don't you you're say totally me. like you too. oh hey yeah and I'm like totally positive and, and then when i'm talking to you it's like what do you want asshole yeah you're a dick <laughs> basically you're the real you is a dick <laughs> and the fact that people get to meet the fake you today oh don't say that <laughs> every, that's not true and, but it is funny that people don't know like that you're well you at home is not you on stage steve on stage is different than you at home it's pretty close though I mean, yes, you're cocky in real life too at home, but still. Well, I, I mean, I mean I, <laughs> well, no, but I think the secret of it all is the fact that I try to be as me as possible on stage. You know, I don't, I like, if I'm going to, like, you know, how many times does Adrian, our social media guy, call me and go, Steve, we need a video. I don't go and get dressed up. Like, whatever I'm wearing. Well, because you don't ever get dressed up. Because I wear the same three shirts on rotation. Because <laughs> I keep it real. I mean, didn't you already wear this for last week's episode? I don't know if this was last week's episode, but I'm sure I, I wear the same shit all the time. That's what I mean. So why would you go fix your hair? Well, that's what I'm saying. I keep it real, dog. I mean, look, you should just be grateful that filming this inspired me to wax yesterday. So honestly, what like, <laughs> so in your opinion, what is what is the difference between me at home and me on stage? Well, at home, you're not on all the time. If you were on all the time, that would be exhausting because there's people that are like that, that feel like they have to be performing all the time and you are not like that, thank God. I would agree with, I mean, you know, I would agree with that, which like, the, I, I think before I was a stand-up comedian, I was on all the time to prove to people that I was funny. And then that's now, what I mean. That's exhausting. And now it's like, oh, and I think people, people's expectations of me, like, like you know, we hang out with the people from the daycare, right? All the all the couples that we've met, that oh, have yeah, kids, yeah. and then if they invite us to their house to do whatever, right? If we go to Matt and Lacey's house, or you're uh, actually kind of toned down and quiet. So see, on stage, you are different. You shouldn't be picking on me for smiling because the camera's turned on because well, uh, you're different on stage. You're totally amped up. It's a different energy. Well, yeah, but what I'm saying is like, I, like when I go to somebody's house and there's people that... Sometimes you get really quiet. I'm, I, I am quiet. Yeah. But but it's 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 hard for me when I walk into a, a, a party or whatever, a kid's birthday party or whatever, and like the people that don't know me or haven't met me yet are like... <laughs> <laughs> like the, you know what I mean? Like they have this smile on their face. Like you look like a creepy clown, dude. <laughs> and, then, and then, and then, what's even worse is when they're like, "Oh, you're a comedian." I'm like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Do you know so and so?" And I'm like, "Tell me a joke." They don't even care about me. They're like, "Oh, do you know Joe Coy?" And I'm like, "Yes, I know Joe Coy." But then there's, um, and then there's all those questions. And then I think people expect me to be funny, and I'm not funny off stage. Yeah. Unless you're with your cousins, then it's like you guys try and one up each other because you're all funny. Yeah, we have. I have a very funny family. Yeah, and I think that's part of of leading me to be a comedian is the fact that being funny in my family is like encouraged on both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think my the, your mom the, is funny. Oh, mom's hilarious, dude. Mom, mom, like I used to love like hearing my mom on the phone try to tell my jokes to her friends. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like my I don't think I've ever heard that. that would and be then great, he actually. said, suck my dick. And it's like, whoa, ma, what, what's your problem? <laughs> but I, I was, I was. Um, How do we go down this road? I don't know. We're just talking about the fake you. Oh, thanks. And how, how thanks. like right now people don't get to meet. You're such a jerk. That's so not the, true. The grumpy, in her pajamas. <laughs> Laying on the okay, sofa. Okay, there's been a lot of that for everyone on the Rona. Yeah, well, I mean, I, that's one of the things that I did want to talk about was the fact that 
you know, me and you as busy as we were before the Rona. I mean, we've always worked out, right? We, we exercise. We yeah. exercise. Yeah. We try to. I try to lift weights or do, you know, I every day I try to do something. Right. And you're the same. You know, you, you work out harder than I do, I would say. I think you're more of a. I would agree with that. You know, you do the. Uh, the I do the spin bike, the, the spin echelon bike. bike. You know, you're, you're always taking a class. Women like classes. <laughs> We're going to take a class. We're going to go and take a class with the girls. That's no, going to change. I just push myself a little more than you do. But that's going to change. Yeah. Right? Like I don't I don't foresee in the near future That's hard. girls doing a class with a bunch of other I mean they're fat open. Moms. I think they have You're such a jerk. My <laughs> bunch of fat moms in there. Really Come on, shape. girls. All right, you're one to talk. Why don't you do this machine, Steve Torino? All well, right? I, I got the arms. I do the arms. Yeah, how about a, how about a little cardio? I, I do full dad bod. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start a Steve Trevino. Good from the, the pecs up? Yeah, dad bod workouts where you look good at a bar. Like oh, the, like yeah. the, yeah, the yeah. bartender's like, damn. That looks good. That yeah. guy works out. And then you push And then I chair. get up and they're like, ooh. Maybe he needs and, a and little. That, and that's why you're sitting in a maybe, bar. Maybe he needs a little crunchy. <laughs> I have the body of a man that does work out. Eh. I'm like Benjamin Button. You don't know if I used to work out and let myself go, <laughs> <laughs> or or I work out but I eat like shit. I'm so confused with right? The so you don't know which way. Like they're like that guy used to be really built, I bet, <laughs> but he hasn't lift. He ain't let himself go. Or that guy just started weight watching. Right? Or, or that guy is man. He works out but he likes tacos. Right? <laughs> That's the body <laughs> that I have. <laughs> The point that I'm trying to make is that we were always making the excuse. Oh, God. Yeah, that realization. Right? Of like, no, no, no. Like I was always like, oh, it's because we're traveling all the time. And I never buy groceries because if I buy them, they spoil because we're never home. So I'm not cooking at home. Like, now I'm cooking at home all the time. And we're still fat. We're still, yeah, no. It, <laughs> no yeah, we're all excited. Like, okay, we're going to use this time right. to really get in shape and really be disciplined and... You know, now that we don't have to travel, now that we're not on airplanes, now that I'm not drinking on the yeah. road, I'm going to yeah. look great after the Rona. Well, we're 60 days in. How is it not? How did it not help somehow? And I still look like shit. <laughs> it's me. It's us. That's when you realize it's us. Yeah. It's not It's not our yeah. activity. It's not. I think we're getting old. I never thought I'd say it, but I think that has <sighs> something to do with that's it. That's the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Is getting older. Oh, I thought you were going to say me. Well, you too. You <laughs> you have definitely... Ruined your life. Ruined my life. But um, I was excited this week. And I got to say, man, like, anxiety-wise and, and depression-wise, like, it has... The Rona has really beaten me up. And I think we yeah. talked about this in the last episode, that it mentally was, was beating me up, winning. Yeah. And we well, just didn't feel like where where what's going to happen? Where does this go? Right. And it now tech, I mean not every place, but now Texas, Arizona, a couple of states are starting to to open back to up. To open back up and you feel like you can kind of see the light at the tunnel. So the tunnel. the, the I, what did you say the other day that <laughs> was so know. funny? You were like, "I'm going to work out the bustles in my mutt." <laughs> and I was like, "What?" <laughs> She's like, I mean the muscles in my butt. I was like, you just said bustles in my mud. But I fully committed to it. You did. You were all like into it. Like, I'm gonna work out the bustles in my mud. <laughs> um, no, so, you know, when Governor Abbott, the, you know, we moved to Texas, you know, we lived in LA for- Over a decade. I lived in LA for 14 or 15 years. Yeah. And then you lived there about 10. Uh, about 10 years yeah. and we decided to move to Texas and and it has been um, great for me it's my home state we're close to family you know um, but God you know, I feel for California I can't imagine us being in California I would go crazy with, in LA. with a little one like in my little apartment that I pay four thousand dollars a month for like you know so when Governor Abbott said all right we're gonna open to 25 percent so then I get a phone call from my agents, managers, and they're like, hey, guess what? You're going to get to work. Which, by the way, this week is when I'm working in San Antonio. It was the original week that we had booked. 
Yeah. So we didn't like fill it in. We were just hoping that it would open. That so, you'd be able to get on stage and perform. Right. So it opened up to 25%. And then I was like, holy crap. I haven't been on stage in two months. So. Yeah, two whole months. That is the most I have not been on stage in 20 years. That's scary. In 20 years, I've never gone more than a few days. And I don't know if we told this story. Did we tell this story about the Tim McGraw concert? No, I don't think we've told that story. When we were supposed to. So I am a workaholic for those of you. I love to work and, and I feel very lucky to do what I do. I personally, we should talk about this too. I personally don't need vacation. I don't, I don't want to be on vacation. And by the way, I think I live a vacation and we get to go to Miami and Vegas and LA and San Diego. And I mean, we get to go to all these great places. So to me, I live on vacation. So we'll, let's go back to that. So Captain Evil here was so annoyed with me working every single week. We had planned to go down home to Corpus Christi, Portland, Gregory Portland. And Renee, you were so happy because you were like, it's going to be a break. Can we just no visit shows. family? Yeah. No shows. I mean, I remember the last time we'd gone home and you not do shows. Yeah. But my thing is people, why would I go home and not do shows? They're going to pay me to tell jokes. Like, why would I not? I get to go home and I get to get paid. Right. But Captain Evil was like, can we just not? So I'm like, fine. I won't work this weekend. And by the way, you also have to explain that even when I do take time off, especially in LA, I would still be at the comedy club. Yeah. Right? I'd still, even if I wasn't working, you I would You do still, comedy nonstop, basically. Right, nonstop. Pre, so, Pre-Rona. Yeah, pre-Rona. Yeah. I, I'm at, even if I'm off, I'm at the comedy club. Right? Yeah. So we're like, okay, we're not going to do stand-up. We're going to go home. I need a vacation. And it's the first time for me to, to take a week off. And actually, it was right before we filmed um, Relatable. God, you have an insane so memory. So we go home, and I find out that Tim McGraw is playing at the American Bank Center in Corpus Christi. I call my friends up that run American Bank Center, Jim Salamente, and I said, Hey, Jim, me and my wife would really like to go to the Tim McGraw concert. Is there any way you could set us up with tickets? He said, No problem. So... On our, we're on our way. We're all dressed up, right? Renee put on her makeup. We were skinny and, then. I remember that. Yeah, there's a great picture of us. <laughs> and I invite I invite Tim and, and, and Clarissa with us, my yeah. cousin, who's like a brother to me. And we all get there. And as soon as I walk in the door, like staff is like, Mr. Trevino, just wait right here. We've been looking for you. And I'm like, looking for me? Then I get a text message from Jim. Where are you? I need you. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? So Jim comes over and says, Sinbad is in the Selena Auditorium right now. Yeah. And he well, is Well, he's still, not in the auditorium. He's, he's not there. He's supposed to be performing. He's supposed to be performing. But he's stuck in Houston at the airport. And he's about to get on a plane. So it's already 8 o'clock showtime. Yeah. He's in Houston. He's not going to be in Corpus for another hour. Can you go on stage? No, I think, didn't he, he end up driving? Like, they just No, said, no, he was already getting oh, on a plane. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then Renee's like... You fucking kidding me? Like really? You're not supposed to be doing <laughs> comedy this plan week. Plan not to work. The universe makes it so that you have to go on stage. So I run, and by the way, it's all connected, right? Celine Auditorium's here. Tim McGraw's playing here. It's all connected. I haul ass over. They and I told, um, I told Jim. I said, "Well, how much time do you want me to do?" And he's like, "Just go until Sinbad gets here." <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm on it, right?" So I get on stage. I I end up doing like. 45 minutes of stand up and then we get off and Jim is like, man, what a huge favor. Uh, We have a box for you to watch Tim McGraw and we're going to cater it and give you all the booze and all the food you can eat. And we ended up in a box watching Tim McGraw. With your cousins. We we happened to be there with like a big group With Tim and Clarissa. And I looked at Renee, I'm like, see? See? (laughs) (laughs) If I wasn't me and I didn't love to work. Yeah. Life is a vacation. Yeah. And we ended up getting hooked up. So uh, after this, we should go back to the idea that you, how much you need vacation. Because I think... <laughs> Why? You're like throwing me under the bus here right and left. Well, no, but we should talk about it. Okay. So 
for me to go <laughs> two months. Much, the way you word things, how much I need a vacation. Oh my goodness. You're just mad because you sound go, bougie right go. now. <laughs> You made me sound bougie. I didn't say that. No, you said you, that. How many times last year? I don't want to get in an argument with you on this thing, but we're going to get in an okay, argument. Keep, how keep many going. times last no, year were like, going. Just keep I need a vacation. <laughs> and I'm looking at the schedule. I'm like, I don't know. We just came back from San Diego. We took our kid to Legoland. Okay. We stay in Mission Beach on Crystal Pier. Like, I need a vacation. I need a vacation. I need a vacation from you. Huh? Well, how then I don't, I'm all about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just can we have some downtime? I'm, I need a vacation from you. Can you get I'm Garrett so, out of here so I can sleep? I'm so tired. Uh, it's time of, to go. We gotta go right now. Come I'm, on. Oh my god, late. I'm Let's so go. tired of being I need a in La Jolla. From you. And I'm exhausted from Vegas and just so tired of Miami. Like I'm done. Anyway. I'm done. So I haven't been on stage in two months back during to the you. Rona. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go back to it. We're gonna go back to it because now look how you're acting. So <laughs> you get uncomfortable, you dude. Know. No, you're getting uncomfortable because I'm calling you on your shit, dude, in front of everybody. So, which by the way, I love doing this because she's so much more tame. In <laughs> front I of an audience. Shit. In front of an audience, she's like, oh my god. At home she'd be like, fuck you. You're an asshole. I do need a vacation. Like that's how she would be at home. So anyway. No, just keep talking. <laughs> Keep drinking. Um, so I know I need something stronger in my cup. The Rona was beating me up. The Rona was mentally making me depressed. Um, so making, you were having a hard time. Making me having a hard time. And then I'm going to do this week in San Antonio. And then uh, I, I talked to Raymond, the, the GM of the comedy club. And he said, well, we're going to do a soft opening at 25%. Um, the week before yours, which was last week. Yeah. And, and I, my concern too was, was how are people going to react to this? Um, are there going to be a bunch of people very upset that this comedy club's having a show? Right. Are, is it going to feel safe? Is it going to feel safe? Are people even going to want to go out, right? Yeah. And I, I do want to mention his name because he's very, very funny. Uh, this guy named Raul Sanchez um, was headlining, which I had never heard of him. He's, and, and I hit, I don't, well, you like popped in. You made a surprise surprise visit. Right. I knew you were coming. But, but what I, uh, I want to say this without hurting Raul's feelings, because he's very talented and very funny. I wanted to see if people were going to come and see somebody who doesn't sell tickets. Right? He's not a name. Right? Right. He's just, not, just, just a, just a, a nicer way to say that, Steve, would be I wanted to see if people were going to come to laugh regardless of who was on stage. Exactly. <laughs> but Raul Sanchez is very funny, and I would like to plug him because he's very funny. <laughs> I show up and it's Friday night. They're only doing one show. 25% capacity of the LOL Comedy Club is 100 people. And there was 40 people there. And I would say zero people were wearing a mask. Really? Not, zero. You, you didn't say that. Not one person was wearing Not a mask. Not one person wearing a mask. And then everybody was spread out through the crowd. And I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, generally speaking, when you see a comedy room, you try to put people as you tight. pack them in like sardines. Well, even if there's 20 people, you want those 20 people to be as close to each other as possible because it creates energy, and it's just how you see the room. So I'm sitting there going, okay, you have this room that seats 400 people. Yeah, it's a big room. And there's 38 people in the room, and they're all spread throughout the room. How is this going to work? And then I decided to host. Was that weird? Was it hard? No, With well, people no, spread out like that? I thought it was going to be, but they were so ready Everyone to was laugh. engaged. Like, I walk on stage and, you know, and then, and then I'm having the debate, do I talk about the Rona? Do I not talk about the Rona? You know, I've always taken the, the approach to stand-up that at my show, we're not going to talk politics. We're not, I, my, my goal is to let you forget about day-to-day the bullshit. Right, right, right. Did you? Do you? I talked about the Rona. I got up there and talked about coronavirus and I didn't do Too any... Too soon? No, people were losing their minds. People were dying laughing, having a great time. And I got to tell you, it's one of the best audiences that I've performed in front of in a long, long time that was not my audience. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, I would go up at the comedy store... And, you know, they don't know who I am. Maybe a few people do, but 
I'm earning the crowd and, and they're having fun and I'm doing a good job, but they're not losing their minds. And this crowd was like having a blast and it felt so good for me to walk on stage. And that's why I decided to host because I wanted to walk on stage several times. Get a gauge. Get a feeling of walking back on stage, grabbing the microphone, being funny. Did it feel weird? Man, it felt really weird. I mean, I feel like you're such a pro. You never, you're not one of those people who needs like prep time before you go oh, on stage no, no. normally. You just like walk on stage and it's like nothing. So to be, to have not done it for two months. Well, you know, and then I'm, I'm like, you know, talking about the fact that there, you know, some of the jokes were like, oh, you guys don't give a fuck. No masks. You know what I mean? You guys are gangsters. Like making fun of that, talking yeah. about the Tiger Kings. I'm going to kill you, bitch. I was doing a, <laughs> right? I was doing a, I hate Carol Baskin. And Joe you know. impersonation. Yeah, yeah, then I was using the, the mic stand as a cane, right? <laughs> hey, man, I'm going to kill you, bitch. You know? And, and, and I mean, people were absolutely, the, the funniest thing that I wrote uh, that night, and I was talking about, you know, how my son, who's four and a half years old, is low risk. Uh-huh. Right. So we took him to Walmart so that when your mom came over, he could hug her. <laughs> right. Go hug grandma. Go give grandma the Rona. <laughs> right? I mean, it's really jerk. funny, dude. You got to admit, that's really did, did funny. They, they laughed. Oh, my God. People were, people were rolling. Right. And then they're like, oh, my God. Like, I can't believe he said that. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I take my son to Walmart. I have them lick all the shopping carts. That is so gross. And, don't say that. And then when your mom comes over, I'm like, go hug. Go hug grandma. You, know, you don't know what people are going to take seriously and what they're not. Well, I mean, look, that's well, that's another problem. We're at a comedy club. You can't take any of this shit serious. Yeah. It's not like I'm really taking my son to Walmart. Yeah. For the record, our son is not licking grocery carts. Right. And for the record, our son does has yet to be in a store. Yeah. And which, by the way, your what was it? Your mom's friend made him a little... Yeah, for, um, well, for when she said for when we start traveling again, she made him his own little homemade, perfectly sized mask. Which I don't know when we haven't we haven't talked like, about that. Like superhero the two of us. superheroes on it. Yeah. So he was all about. It. He's like, Dad, can I go in the store now? So I, what did we let him go into? Uh, I don't remember. I forget. Recently, he was like, "Well, can I go here?" I'm like, "Well, you can't go to a like H E B or yeah." A, I think we let him walk into a convenience store. Oh yeah, yeah. Quickly and and walk out so that he can try his. Yeah. Mask out, you know, and then and then he he was wearing the the mask at at, at my dad's house. He likes wearing. Oh, it. He was all about it, right? And and he he's wearing the mask at dad's house, and and my dad goes, "Oh, do you like your mask?" And he goes, "Well, I'm smiling." <laughs> and it's like, dude, nobody can see you smile, bro, right? Um, but it was definitely for me, for my mental health, leaving the club that night. Man, I, I had I had energy back. I was I was happy. I felt happy. I felt um, I just I, I've always been you know I I know depression's very real. I don't know what it feels like, and now I have a taste of what that might feel like. Yeah, you know. But but walking on stage and getting walking on and off stage was just, and there was also something really special about for me at least. And, and again, I'm trying to say this without bragging, but to be able to sit in the back of the room and watch other comedians perform. And Which I, you, it's interesting to say that you enjoy doing that because you hate watching comedy. Like in the past, you've never sat in the back of the room and watched comedy. I do. I, I, I hate watching comedy now, but back when I, you know, when I first started headlining, nobody knew who I was, right? And there was also that feeling of, ooh, they don't know who I am now. But I'm going to walk on stage and they're going to know who I am. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to sit in the back of the room and there was somewhere to sit, first of all, lately, you know, at my shows, it's completely sold out. You know, there's no way I can sit in the back of the room because if Kyle Ray's on stage and I walk into the audience, then it becomes a distraction yeah. for Kyle because then everybody's like, oh, hey, Steve, and take a picture with me. So I, I have to, I hide out in the green room to not distract um, what's going on with Kyle. And then another thing I learned was, you know, some of the people in that audience, I would say half and half. Half knew who I was, half had no idea who I was, yeah. right? I also learned that, like, going into a bit about you, for example. 
Oh. They didn't know the backstory. There's no history there. My fans know yeah. the backstory. My fans know that, oh my God, he's going to talk about that you Renee call me Captain and Evil. Captain Evil. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I jumped right into a bit about you and I could tell them like, oh, I need a little You're more like, why setup. Why are you so mean to your wife? <laughs> I, need, <laughs> I need a little more setup to get into it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and by the way, I didn't do, so that was Friday. Uh-huh. Didn't do any Wait, material. I want to know, did you stay till the end and watch people walk out? Did you mm. get that response as people were walking no, out? No, 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 because I left. Um, because me and you talked about how I'm not going to be doing meet and greets. Yeah. The less hands and people I can avoid, the better. Right? Not just for, for us. us. So you're not you're not passing it on. To anybody. From, yeah, right. from so one person to the next. I, I ended up leaving early. And then, you know, by the way, I wanted to get home earlier, too, and... and so then Saturday when I went back, it was it was different. Saturday had almost 70 people. So more people. More people. But they were not as into it. And several people were wearing masks. I um, wonder what it was. You would think Saturday night people, it's like their big Saturday night plans. I, was, I mean, I just think it's interesting, too, that it's like, I so want to go out, but I'm going to wear my mask. Like, Well, but even... Even before Rona, well, BC, before Corona, even BC, um, each show was different. Audiences were different on a regular week. And even when they were your paid audience coming to see you specifically, it would just happen. Some shows, they were yeah, funky. But th- th- Sometimes they were a better uh, crowd. Uh, this one was different. You know, and you could t- it felt more Corona-y. <laughs> right? Like, people were more like, should I be out? I don't know if I should be out. Can I laugh at Corona jokes? Can I not laugh at Corona jokes? You know, so it was definitely um, a a different feeling. Does that make you a little nervous for this week in San Antonio? A little bit. Well, what makes me nervous is I I went into a bit Saturday night because I was like, oh, I need to do a a, a bit. I need to tell a story that, you know, that we I've been telling. Yeah. And I, I was like, oh, shit, I forgot. Like, you know, I was getting into the I speak wife bit and I was like, uh-huh. Oh, how no, does this like, joke go? <laughs> how does this joke go? Which, by the way, I still... Like, We're an earpiece. I'll give it to you from the back of the room. I was, <laughs> I was still blank. I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, you know, as a matter of fact, I had to ask Timmy. I was like, hey, Timmy, what's what's another I speak wife? And he was like, oh, the, the Crown Royal. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it, I, I, I got to get back into the swing of the new act because we're going to film our... I know, when you were talking uh, about filming... Fourth special. When you were talking about filming the next special, I was like, you haven't... And you're like, yeah, yeah, I can be ready. I was like, you have not done a set for two months. What do you mean you can be ready in two weeks? Like... Dude, I'm really nervous about it. Crazy. But I'm excited. Yeah. So now let's change subjects to you needing a vacation. Ay, ay, ay. Should we wait? No, we got time. You want to stay married? (laughs) I do want to stay married. I would like to stay married. It feels silly to talk about this now after having like a two month long break because I swear the words I need a vacation will not come out of my mouth for the rest of the year at least. We think. <laughs> at least. We think. <laughs> we hope. This year. The rest we of hope. 2020. I mean look, I just I just feel so lucky that, that I get to go back to work. I know that I feel lucky know. that you get to go back to work too. Yeah, it's yeah. our freaking livelihood. So talk about you needing a vacation. No, you would work nonstop. And even when you said, oh, this is a, like, yes, our vacations are planned around your work, but that means Garrett and I are a slave to your schedule. So that means oftentimes Garrett and I are waking up in the morning. Did you hear that? A slave. (laughs) We're slaves. It means your schedule dictates our lives. It means that we have a certain time that we have to be someplace and we have to be ready. And it means that if we take a nap in the afternoon, we've got to set an alarm. We can't just sleep the whole day away and take a shower whenever we wake up. The only thing I have to do, the only thing I have to do is go to work. I I have morning press, right? You don't have to go to morning press. No, but then if you want to come back and take a nap because you're up all night, Garrett and I go and do an activity by ourselves, and that's the two of us, instead of a family doing something together, all three of us. Sorry about different. your life, dude. It's not the same. Sorry about your life. I'm not, I'm not bitching. We get to go to a We have to place. go to the pool and get served at the pool without you? Shut up. Oh, my God. 
We have to let the waitress know. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, I'm just saying it's not the same. It's different when we don't have to be which, accountable to anything, and we're just the three of but us. I'm, I'm, and you don't feel obligated to take pictures or stay but an I'm hour not a, and a half after the show to shake hands. I'm like, not a sit on a beach kind of guy. You are not a sit on a beach kind of guy. I don't know how agreed. people can do that. How I, I how do you like? I, just, I don't just sit on the beach. I build sandcastles with Garrett. We walk and we look for seashells. Like I can't, dude. I I go crazy, man. I have to have. I have to be doing something. And Renee's like, oh, I love the beach. I don't like the sand in my toes. Which is weird because you're usually the... filthy all the time. Why does the sand bother me? I'm filthy because I'm doing stuff. <laughs> I'm not filthy because, like, right now, if I was in sand, I'd be so fucking annoyed. I don't like the beach. You love the beach. I do. I like the sound of the waves. And I go to the beach for you. You really rarely. You really can't. Rarely. You really can't go in the water. Yeah, you can. Why can't you go in the water? I like boating. Like, I don't mind taking a boat out, fishing off that boat. Pulling a tube or... or Fit, you or, like fishing. How is that not doing nothing? Or cooking out on a boat. Fishing. Fishing is basically doing nothing. No, it's not. Yes, I'm it is. Fishing. It is an activity. Occasionally, you catch something and then you can be like caveman, like, oh, I caught our food. But that's that's it. And that's occasionally. But I don't... I'm not sitting in the sand. Doing you know, nothing. You're sitting on a boat. It's the same thing. No, it's not the same thing. It's an activity. We can do stuff. And then I don't mind boating. I don't mind. I mean, but just sitting. Or you like you'll sit by a pool. I like to read. You're, you're like I would like I like to read a magazine. Like so. A so book. last year, because Renee demanded a vacation. <laughs> Which, by the way, the freaking hurricane ruined your our Bahamas trip. Yeah, we were gonna go to the Bahamas. We were, I was performing in Miami, and then I was gonna have four days off, and then I, then we had to be in Naples. Yeah. So Renee had to vacation in between Naples no, and Miami. No, you're a jerk. Okay? It was my birthday. No, you are such a jerk. So. No, because why would you fly from Texas all the way to Miami to turn around, fly back to Texas for three days, and then go back to Florida We could have just stayed. That's silly. It happened to be my birthday. So we said, you know what? We'll take the three days and just stay here instead of flying back and forth. So then we're like, okay. It makes perfect bougie sense. So I was like, okay, we'll go to the Bahamas. And then all of a sudden, I forget the Dorian was it Hurricane Dorian? Uh, the one that like blew up the Bahamas last year. Right. So of course. So here comes the hurricane. So then we're like, okay, well, why don't we stay in the Florida Keys, right? And then dude, this one, the hurricane's coming. They've already said like, oh, you wanted to put me and Garrett on a plane and ship us back. No, no. Th- well, yeah, because I was like, I, I, I want to make the right decision for my family. I, I don't want to be the guy that's like, oh no, we decided to stay in the path but of this a is hurricane. Like when it was way out. No one knew. And then which, this one here was like, she's literally calling the hotel in the Keys, and she's like, hey, so can we still come? And I'm like, no, dude, we're not going to the Keys, where there's one road in, one road out. So we ended up going to Naples. Naples early, and we had our vacation. It was it lovely. Wasn't the it was wonderful. I was going crazy. I appreciate dude. it. I was going Thank you freaking so much. insane. And she's like, every day she'd wake up and be like, "What are we gonna do today? Lay by the pool or lay by the beach?" I'm like, "Oh my god, this shit's gonna kill me." No, Garrett loved it. They had sand toys. He'd play with pool toys. They had someone come by the pool and do little activities. I'm not a get in the pool guy. <laughs> I'm not a sit at the pool guy. I'm not a sit at the. I I, I like You're the barbecue. You're only a sit on a boat guy. No, or sit at a bar guy. Uh, yeah, no, but I like the barbecue. Like but even a boat, a bar. But even at the bar, I want to play darts. I want to shoot pool. I want to do something. <laughs> what is with I'm all doing these my weird act out. That's my movements. shoot pool, throw darts. I want to do something. I, I'm not. I just can't do nothing. It's 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 how I'm built. I read. I play with our child. That is not. Doing I play with nothing. Garrett. I don't. Like I don't play with my son. I I did not say that. Do you see how you twist my words? I feel like this episode you have just twisted my words. Oh, which by so the way, so ways. so we finally. She wants to do a staycation. Oh, by the way, this is vacation number two that she's made me take last year, and we we end up at the JW Marriott in San Antonio, Texas, which I I did enjoy because there's things to do there. 
For one night. We stayed one night. Two nights? No, I'm pretty sure it was one. It was two nights. No, it was one. And then, There's no way and, you could have handled two nights. I don't want to talk shit about the JW Marriott because it's a beautiful, it's a great, it's, it's like a Vegas casino without the slot machines, right? And the gambling. It's... They've got several different swimming pools. There's Have water slides. Have you noticed slides. also this episode how you're like, I don't want to talk shit. I don't want to talk bad, but I'm just, trying point, to just be, pointing it out. I'm just trying to be <laughs> just nice. Just pointing it no, out. But they're like, we're, we're reading the program and it's like, oh, bring your kid to kids night. Oh, oh, kids camp. Kids camp. Yes, that's why Garrett freaked out today when we were talking about oh, summer camp because dude. this kids camp. Dude, so it says kids <laughs> camp and it also says like pirate theme. Yes. Pirate theme and my son loves pirates so I'm like, all right, man, we'll set a dinner reservation at the steak place. Me and you will go to dinner and Garrett gets to go <laughs> to, to pirate, pirate camp. camp. Dude, I show up, it's the saddest shit. <laughs> It's the, even I wanted to cry. Like, it was, I get there, there's like two lonely kids. Like, imagine they took a ball, like a, like one of the ballrooms, right? With the wall, they pull down the bullshit screen. There's two 18 year old girls there. They've got a bucket of crayons, like a shitty bucket. You know, the, the bucket of shitty crayons? All that, the broken crayons. Yeah, all the broken, like, <laughs> shitty crayons. They've got, like, a pirate ship to color. And there's two sad kids, dude, just sitting in this room. Like, and, like, one of the poor girls is wearing a patch. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a pirate outfit, dude. Just a freaking patch. And then Garrett was like, I'm like, oh, dude. I'm like, and then you're trying to encourage. You're like, look, buddy, they got a shitty box of crayons. Come on, dude. Like, me and mommy need a steak dinner. Come on. It's pirate camp. So I leave him. And the poor girls call us like, what, 15 minutes later. Yeah. And they're like, hey, man, we tried, but your kid's losing his shit. I mean, I didn't go get him, dude. It was the saddest shit. Uh, oh my god, poor kid, dude. And th th there's moments where you're when you when you like, there's times where you're like, "Look, kid, this is awesome, yeah. right? You're being a dick. Like, yeah. this is awesome. Stop crying. You've got whatever." But th in this situation, I was like, "Yeah, hey man, it's kind of shitty." No, dude. clearly, <laughs> he, clearly like, he was traumatized by it though, because today when we were talking about possible summer camps, he, lost was, his mind. he was like, "I'd rather go to school." <laughs> This morning, I, he goes, I, I, I'll go to school. I don't want to go to summer camp. <laughs> JW Marriott, yeah, damn that's you. That's what it was. But it's yeah. a great place. It really is a great place. Just don't count on kids camp. Yeah. Oh, Bring dude, it was, it was the saddest shit. But it's like, remember when he was, when we were having a hard time getting him to sleep in his room, and he'd come to our room. Oh. And I just sympathize with him because I'm like, because <laughs> we've got this badass king size mattress, memory foam. We've got the the duvet cover. <laughs> we've got badass sheets and his little bullshit bed. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like one of those baby crib toddler beds. Toddler mattress. Yeah, it's like a toddler <laughs> mattress. And he'd come over like, why can't I sleep with you guys? And he'd be like, no, nah, go back to your shitty mattress. <laughs> Go back to your prison mattress. <laughs> Look, poor kid's on a freaking prison mattress. And, and he like, he, he's in our bed like, dude, why can't, why can't I sleep in this? Like, the freaking, we got a duvet cover this thick. It's down, right? It's a down comforter. And, and go back to your prison mattress, dude. Don't sleep with that. What's wrong with you? Don't sleep with your shit. Uh, so anyway... You know, it, it, it's, it's so frustrating because people are so torn and I don't think anybody's wrong and I don't think anybody's right. Well, you know? but I are, are, you, like, are you right for being home? Yeah. But it also depends you know, where you like, are, right? If you're in a more rural place, your experience and what's happening is very different than if you're in New York or New Jersey or even parts of California, like up and down the state is different depending but, on but where you are. I, I really care about people and I really think about the people who have lost their jobs the unemployed people, the people that might lose their businesses. Um, and I, I just, it's a tough decision, but 
me personally, I'm happy to go back to work. Um, that's how I feed my family. And I hope that I hope that people enjoy the show and I hope that um, things don't get worse. You know, because yeah. I'd, I'd hate to do a double shutdown, but um, I'm looking forward to this week and doing You've shows. Got a, you, I feel like we know we have a couple of Texas dates. We don't necessarily know what's happening around San Antonio's the rest of the happening country, this but... week, but this episode's not going to come out until after that. Um, and then we have Houston coming up and then we're holding on to a Tampa date. So uh, I think that's going to be in the middle of July. But um, we love everybody and we hope. Uh, oh, by the way, so it's very important. Um, I know that my wife and I are late to the podcasting game, um, but it's very important that you like it, you share it, take a couple of extra seconds to review it, to share it, to let people know that we're doing this podcast and and hopefully um, send us can... topics, right? Like I want to oh, yeah, hear from always. I want to hear from people. Um, and, and chime in if, if you know send us messages about this episode and let let us know that Renee does not need vacation. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Yeah, she's I a told you, brat. for the rest of the year, no vacations, <laughs> except Tampa. I'm going to Tampa, but... <laughs> That's not a vacation. Yeah, no, it's not a vacation. That's work. Uh, so this is the Steve and Captain Evil podcast. Uh, as always, you look fabulous, and oh, I look thanks. like shit. I love you. Stay safe, guys, and uh, we'll see you next time.